How's it going, everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. Welcome back to learning RPG Maker MZ The Basics. In this episode, we're going to be looking at how to use variables in multiple different ways, how to set them, how to assign them, how to manipulate them, how to use them to set page conditions, and how to use them to switch through pages. We're going to make a small little quest line progress as the variable increases. You may not want to have a switch for every part of that quest. You can instead use a variable. And the variable will act just like a switch, but it's more than just a zero and a one. Variables can also hold other sets of data like strings and arrays. In the last episode when we learned about switches, we made a simple quest, but we did miss one thing. I left it out for this tutorial. You can actually meet the requirements of the quest before accepting the quest, thus pushing it into the next page. You cannot require that a quest be accepted before it can be completed, or you can allow it to be completed even if it wasn't accepted. So I'm going to show you how to make a requirement in order for this quest to get started in the first place. So let's create a new variable by single clicking on the three dots and we're going to assign one. It doesn't really matter the number or the name. Just remember which one you're using. So we're going to make this variable three. I'm going to call it quest line. In order for this to happen, we're going to make it so that this variable has to be greater than or equal to one. All variables will be zero from the get go. And in your initialization event, if you have a controller event or something that runs at the beginning of the game a single time, you can automatically assign those variables right there to remind yourself that you're using it. And that's what I'm going to do. So at the beginning, when we start on this map, variable three quest line is going to be set to zero, even though it's already set to zero. That's called initialization. Some things will work perfectly fine without initialization, but sometimes you'll need to do some sort of initialization on your variables, especially if you're gonna be using them in like damage formulas and whatnot. Now that we've initialized that variable and we've set the conditions of this second event in order for this event to do anything the quest line will have to have started here's where we're going to set this variable to one we could instead add one to it since we just set it to zero first time we're using it i'm going to set it to one so we select our variable set our operation to set and the operand will be constant of one whatever value that the third game variable had in it change it change it to one now that's what set will do So now, if we try to start this quest line before we've talked to the quest giver, it will do nothing, as you can see here. So we have to go back and start the quest line where Lule says, please help me find some power crystals, and then I'll find you some. And now that we've accepted the quest, if we go to where the quest is at, the power crystals will be there and we can turn the quest in. Now, that's great and all, but we could have used a switch for this whole entire thing, right? So what's the difference between variables and switches then? Well, switches only have two values, a zero and a one. Variables can hold many, many values. So we can push this quest line further by adding one to it when we complete the quest. When we award the elixir, we can also change that variable, that same variable, except this time we're not going to set it to a value, we're going to add to its value by changing it by a constant of one. We also push that quest line variable by adding one to it. So the variable will now be two, which will still meet the requirements of this right here because it's greater than or equal to one. But what that lets us do is now we can start a quest that would make this quest that we just completed the prerequisite to the next quest. Let's make a new event. This will be this lady, nothing happens when you try to talk to her, but if we have a new page, let's copy this and paste this, and we set the variable conditions to be this quest line greater than or equal to two, well, then we can have her do something different. We'll name her second quest giver. We talk to her the second time, and she prompts you with the option to have a more challenging task. So we'll see if the player is up for it. We'll show choices if they want another quest. So if the player will ask about the challenge, if they do ask about the challenge, the lady will prompt us with the next quest and she'll let us know that she needs help leaving this room. There's two very angry statues that are blocking the way and they demand that she proves herself to pass. So we have to eliminate these angry statues and return to the second quest giver once we've done so to do our second quest. We'll say, I'll help you get out of here or I'm too busy, old lady. Oof. We'll help you get out of here. We can progress the storyline. Now we can do a self switch here just to move this page. 
So we'll do a self switch. We've already gone over these. I'll just paste this over here. Now the page conditions for this page will be self switch A is on and the quest line is two. Uh, we can actually turn that off because all we need here is self switch A to be on. If self switch A is on, then all we need this to say, please return once you read the path or something like that. Okay, and so she'll just keep saying that until we'll copy this page and paste it until our variable quest line gets to the greater than equal to three. So how do we get variable quest line greater than equal to three? Well, you guessed it, we're gonna have to slay queen. We're gonna have to slay the angry statues. Thank you so much for freeing my path. And then we can have a move route where she walks out of here. So let's set a move route. We'll have this event. Move down, left, left, down, 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 and turn. And then we'll turn self switch B on at this point. I actually need to preview this route to make sure it'll go right. So she'll walk down and just like that. And we can have her walk down, 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 five, six, seven, eight. We'll have her go down 10 more times. We can close the preview. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That ought to do. And then she should be able to walk all the way out of here like so. I'll get rid of the last one and skip if cannot move. We're gonna check on wait for completion. That way the player can't get in the way of this move event. At the end of this, we'll turn on a self switch B and create a new page where the event will be self switch B has to be on as a condition, but it's just a blank page. That's how we'll make our progress. But what we can do is give a, a reward to the player. So we should do that as well. Here's an elixir for your troubles and we should award that elixir as well. So we already wrote the code for that in another event. Let's go ahead and take that whole thing where we award an elixir. So we'll take that elixir and copy this as well with the shift button and left click, control C to copy. I'll go over to this event, put it where it needs to be, right here, bang. We'll also play a sound effect when we get that elixir. That'll work, there we go. So at that point, the quest line variable will be set to three. In order to continue the quest line, all you have to do is set the page conditions to check the variable quest line to make sure that it is greater than equal to three or four. We need to write the event. Once variable quest line is greater than equal to two, this invisible event will appear as player touch. So when the player walks by the statues, they automatically get attacked by it. And afterwards, what we wanna do is control a variable and turn that variable to three in order to complete. So we're just gonna add one to it at this point, plus equal one. It'll be two to start, and then it'll be three after this. Copy this page, paste this page, and make it so that after we've beat the angry statues, nothing else will happen. We can set the trigger back to action button, have this blank page. But once quest line is greater than or equal to three, there will be no more statues trying to smash you. Now all that's left to do is to check the entire quest line to make sure everything works like it's supposed to. So right off the bat, we should not be attacked by the animated statues and it appears that they don't attack us. We should also not be able to access this because we haven't accepted the quest to do so. So we'll go back and do that. So everything looks like it has to be set up. But what about if we talk to this lady? Nothing happens. So we haven't met that part of the quest yet. We can't we can't do this quest line because we have to do this part first. So we help Lule find some power crystals. We'll do that. We'll go get those power crystals very quickly. And now that we've accepted the quest, it lets us grab those crystals. We get those crystals. And we walk back. Still no attack from the, the guys yet. We talk to her again. She says, thank you so much. Here's an elixir for your troubles. Um, we should play a little sound effect there, but that's okay. But now that we've completed that quest, the second quest giver acknowledges that because we've controlled a variable and we've used one variable to progress a quest line. Now that you've already helped my young friend here, I've got a more challenging task for you. So we can ask about that challenge. I need help leaving this room. Two very angry statues are blocking the way and demand I prove myself to pass. Please eliminate them to, and return to me. So we'll say, I'll help you get out of here. And if we talk to her, she just says, please come back, you know, once you've done what you said you're gonna do, clear the path. So now the statue should attack us, and they do. In order to pass, you must prove yourself each time. We get attacked by these guys, and we have to kill them. So let's have some fun and kill these guys. These animated, evil, angry statues.
There we go. And finally, we can come back to this lady. And she says, thank you so much for freeing my path. Here's an elixir. As she walks down. We're locked in this move movement event until it switches pages. And she should switch to an empty page. She's gone. She walked out. And that's, that's the whole quest line. And we can continue this quest line by using the same variable, greater than equal to three to start it. To get the next objective, you would just check to see if it's greater than equal to four. And there's many ways you can use a variable to make a quest line just like this. But that's gonna do it for this simple tutorial, the basics of using a variable in RPG Maker MZ. Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful and informative. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Join us on Discord, and thank you so much to everybody watching. Big shout out to Dejica for sponsoring this tutorial. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.